all that long. I know here at top it might be a little dizzy coming down, so hold the rails, but we're going to be coming down here in a minute. So, what we're going to do is we're going to play a little greeting game. We're going to be coming down here to the floor because you can't just sit up there and greet each other. So you notice I handed out a green and a red paper. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to learn how to greet each other. So, um, it doesn't matter if you speak English or Spanish, you're still going to learn each other's names. So, if you have green, you're going to say, thank you. If you have green, is it on? If you have green, you are going to say, if you speak English, you will say, hello, my name is... I would say, hello, my name is Kathy. What is your name? And if you have read, you would say, my name is, whatever your name is. And then if you're green, then you would say to that person, it's nice to meet you. Then you're going to go on and find another person with red. Say the same thing. So if you're green and you speak Spanish, you're going to say, hola, mi nombre es. And I'm sorry, I haven't practiced the next st <laughs> statement, so I'm not going to butcher it. And if you're re holding red, you're going to say, Mi nombre es. Then the green person's going to say to that person is, and I'm not going to butcher that statement either. But I'm going to learn Spanish eventually. I took it way back in junior high, and that was a long time ago. So, do you understand the instructions? Okay. So, you're going to have one minute to do this. And so go through that and practice that as many times as you can and meet new people in here today. And I'm going to time it. So let's have everyone come down to the floor. And then I will set a timer. And if you forget what you're supposed to say, you have a little visual cue up here. Go ahead, everybody come on down with your paper, hold it up. Go ahead and get started now. Get them right? Oh, good effort. You know what? I'm going to give you a kiss. <laughs> hey, anyone else? Green card? Okay, how about the red cards? Okay. Horacio, Jean, Myra, Rosa. Awesome! I'm going to give you a kiss too. Okay, anyone else? All of you did a great job, thank you. Awesome.
So you see how tough it can be sometimes just learning to greet someone, but that's a basic social skill. I saw some of you using the visual cue. Did that help? See, even as adults who don't have a disability, we sometimes can benefit from visual cues. Teaching social skills, it involves move this manually. It involves a group or individual instruction to teach appropriate interactions with people. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll be doing basic um, concepts, some role playing and practice, and we just did that with our greeting. It involves play, and it involves skills to promote communication, to promote positive interactions, and some modeling and video modeling. I know there may be some things in your, your handout that are different in here because I went in and uh, changed a few things in here after it was printed, but that's okay. Um, so now we're going to look at this next one here, checking your feelings. Some of you, as you were coming in, we were still trying to fix the te technology, so not everyone got to this, but I had some of you check your feelings. And one of the things that we research has shown is that some people who have disabilities and some people who don't have difficulties with feelings, and um, that can be understanding their own feelings, but also understanding the feelings of other people. And that's part of social interaction. And it's not just facial expression, but it's body language. So some of the instruction that we start with is teaching instruction in feelings, how to read feelings, how to understand our own feelings, and how to understand the feelings of other people, because that helps in, um, and, in getting along with people. So sometimes we'll start by teaching children with uh, visuals with feeling charts. So with children who are, say, third grade and younger, we might start with a chart like this in a classroom. And you can see not everybody feels the same, correct? There are some people who are happy, excited, someone who's frustrated. And what's interesting, some children, they'll come in and they want, uh, I've had some children, they want everybody to feel the same and they're like, they want to change it. It's like, well, no, look at so-and-so over here. They're having a little meltdown, a little tantrum, does that look excited like you? No, they're frustrated. And so when they're frustrated like this, you know how they get, they might hit you. So we need to create some personal space. So that's how you can teach about other people and how they act when they're feeling different ways. And you know, you see how she's at, she's excited and she doesn't want to sit in her chair. And so when we're excited like that, you know, here's how we can also tame our feelings and tame our behavior. So we can also teach children when we're reading stories to them, when we're watching TV. Look at their face. Do they look happy? Do they look sad? What are, you know, what's some of the other things? What's their body language when they're doing that? Someone's arms are crossed. What does that mean? You know, so point these things out because these things, a lot of children aren't getting these things. Most of us, people didn't point this out to us. We just kind of picked it up as we went about our way. No one pointed it out to us. But with a lot of our children, we have to teach this to them. It gets exhausting with our children. We have to teach them everything. But that's OK. That's part of being a parent. That's part of being a teacher. Now, you'll see this chart. We had the thermometer. When I first started teaching this to children, I started with this one. And I found with children younger than fourth grade, they would all go to the top. They didn't understand the concept of the thermometer. So but I found that with fourth grade on up, they understood this thermometer. And when you get into like teenage years, puberty, boy, they get those mixed emotions. And, and you can teach them with this, how you can have mixed emotions, and it's OK. And your feelings can change throughout the day. And this is how I was feeling. I was super excited when I was coming over here, really pumped, and got in here and the technology started failing. So I was like this, because I was ready to greet you guys when you came in, and then stupid computer got me frustrated. And our kids get that way too, and we need to teach them. It's okay, I'm frustrated, but I'm not gonna throw the computer at you guys when you come in. Just because it's not working, we're still gonna have fun today. So we can teach our kids about that, how we can calm ourselves and redirect ourselves. So it's a great visual tool. And say, you don't have to have a whole chart like that. Sometimes if you've got a big family, you might wanna do that, kinda of check everyone's feelings. Or sometimes we'll do that with an individual feeling chart. And we've got some other tools like this. Um, we use one 
real expensive one called a CAT kit, Cognitive Effective Training Kit. Or you might use a simple one like this, a thermometer, and then you give the, the, your child a choice and they can put their thermo uh, feelings on the thermometer and then have them tell you where they're feeling that feeling in the body. You know, I've had some students who will tell me, I'm feeling that feeling in my hands. Well, then we teach them, when you're feeling that anger in your hands, let's put those hands in the pocket instead of through a window or instead of through someone's uh, face because that's not a good social skill. So that's one of the beginnings where you start with some of these social skills and social awareness with people, is teaching them how to, how to understand their feelings and the feelings of others to social regulate, okay? So we're gonna move on from there. And I'm hoping I can get over to this one. I think I found, it. nope, not that one. I had pulled it up earlier. Ah, this one. Autism is a neurological condition. The neurons don't really line up properly. You know, we're born with uh, communication issues. Like, my brain is wired very differently, they say. And sometimes it makes it pretty hard for me to socialize with others because I often screw up my words or don't know what to say. I'm very curious, so I'll ask questions. And then that sometimes gets me in a bit of trouble because it's like, that's inappropriate. It's like, damn. Sorry. Sometimes I'll act in the way that people say, oh, I'm too honest. I have social difficulties and I find it hard to control strong emotions. If I exhibit or experience any emotions, it's always on the extreme ends. If I'm happy, I'm really happy. If I'm angry, I'm really angry. As you can see, I'm often frowning. Sometimes I forget to smile. And you should probably smile when you're on camera. More presentable. Body language and stuff is, is, is always difficult to read. Sometimes people pull faces and I don't know what emotion it could be, whether they are amused or shocked or dumbfounded or mind boggled. And honestly, the only emotional reaction I can read with any degree of accuracy is when someone's laughing. I have a tendency to get obsessed with things. Sometimes I try to resist an obsession, but then in the end it becomes too much, and then it takes over my brain. Sensory sensitivity, especially like noises, like dull, continuous noises, like beeping, really like does my head in. Makes it hard to do everyday things. I am prone to anxiety, when you have an anxiety attack, you want to curl up in a ball and be in this, at least a perceived state of non-existence. You're not retarded, you're not stupid, you're not brain dead, you're just thinking differently. Common depiction of autism is that it's a defect. I just see it as um, being born with the ability to see the world through a different perspective and honestly think it's people like me that keep things interesting. And people like that do keep the world interesting. And we need people with differences. You know, we're all different in many ways. And I love hearing from people who have differences and from their perspective because I think we learn a lot from them. And so could you kind of hear how difficult it must be for them living in a world with people who don't have those differences? And so you can have a little compassion and maybe understand why they have some difficulty in, in social situations. And so we, we need to help them with that. And they, they have difficulty with their emotions, which also makes it difficult in a social situation. And they're trying to get jobs. And employment si situations are uh, social situations. So that's why it's important that we teach social skills to our kids. Those are what are considered soft skills and those are the types of skills that are leading to unemployment or underemployment for our students um, on the spectrum and with other disabilities. And so that's why it's so important that we put a great emphasis on teaching those skills. And we need to put those into IEPs for our students. And, and you need to help them as parents also. Um, so a, a fact, a, um, 
a parent with a, uh, a child with a disability sent me that on Facebook. Facebook. Um, I've worked with her in the past, and um, the only way I can get that is on Facebook. So I was able to pull that up. I was glad. And I just got it last week, and so I was glad to be able to share it with you. Um, they're coming to the U.S. Employable, employable Me Now is coming to the U.S., and they're going to start filming some people and helping them get into jobs here in the U.S. So, um, visual supports, and you've got several visual supports in your handout. Um, there are many more, but I, I gave you some that maybe you can take home and use. We'll look at some of those. Um, this talking scale. Um, this is one you might be able to use at home. I mean, because home is a social situation too. Um, how about when you're watching a movie and, you know, zero, you don't want to talk at that point. But what is quiet and what is too, too loud? That's just kind of an abstract concept. And this visual helps bring it, um, make it more real so you can, can teach that. So I gave that to you. Another one that is rather abstract is respect, respectful. And so here's a real concrete way that you can teach that. Um, here's another one, when I'm mad, I will try to calm myself in some steps for a person, a visual way um, to help teach calming. Another way to teach social skills is through scripts, kind of like that first one when we were greeting each other. So. Um, you can also, I put some scripts over here. These were taken from a classroom, a general ed classroom. And they were teaching social skills to everybody in the class. And these were just some scripts that the, the students, they were posted in the classroom, they, the teacher taught them, and they could refer back to them in the classroom. Because some kids, when they're having, um, they don't know what to say, they need something to refer back to. So you might think about it with your own children if they're just conversations you're having in your family, you might come up with some scripts that they can use. Um, just, thank you for working with me, I agree with you, or agree with so-and-so because, I disagree with so-and-so because. Another one, one that's really hard is like interrupting. You know, when, when to interrupt. They always want to interrupt when you're on the phone, correct? or when you're going to get in the shower. You know, always those times, or when you're in the bathroom, something like that. You know, when to interrupt. So teaching that. So I'm gonna show you, um, you, you wanna model those things, teaching the script by role playing, modeling. And another technique is called video modeling. So I had, we were gonna do an exercise of video modeling. We're going to practice in just a minute with you guys. And I was gonna, make some video models of you guys, but I don't think with the technology failure we had today, we're gonna to do that. But I do have a little video model to show of some colleagues at work. They helped me out here. And this is the interrupting. Oh, let me go back here. So the steps to interrupting. You decide if you need to interrupt, you walk up to the person, you wait until there is a break in their conversation, and then you say, excuse me. So here's some colleagues demonstrating through video modeling, interrupting. Jamie, I think that is a very good idea to give the parents the description of FLS, ADL, and autism in a handout. And I'm gonna give, I'm gonna email it to Beth and give her permission to, to make the copies. Sounds great. Sounds good. Yeah. And I'm gonna make it in color. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Excuse me. Hi. I had a quick question. What do you guys yes. think about Hi. this? I just printed this out. Okay. See, it was real short. Okay. How many of your children like watching videos? Okay. Um, how many of you have a smartphone that will take videos? Okay. Just about everyone. So all of you can make video models for your children. Very easy. So the concept behind video models is a lot of our children like videos. They learn from videos. They are focused on videos all the time. So use that technology. It's something that they like. And the way you use video models is you want to use it to teach them the skill that you want them to do. And it, it's best if you can find them doing, and you also want to video them doing the right thing. 
You never want to give them, do a video of them doing the wrong thing. Because then if you show them doing it over and over, they're going to practice doing the wrong thing, the inappropriate thing, over and over. So catch them doing something well. You can video them doing the skill, or you can video maybe a sibling doing the skill, or you can do, do a video of another adult doing the skill. And then you can model it for them, practice, and have them do the video. So they can do that over and over. And that can be for any skill, a social skill. It could be even washing hands, um, just any kind of skill, sweeping. Think of different chores around your house. You can use video modeling so they can watch it. That way you don't have to stand over there nagging them all the time. Do, do you ever have to nag about how to do things over and over? Use a video model. You dag them one time with the video, then you just go here, here. And they'd rather have that than you standing over them nagging all the time, okay? So we're gonna practice here in just a second. Oh, but first, before we do that, I need to have everybody, you, if you feel comfortable standing in your seat, if you wanna get down on the floor, you can do that here. But, um, for a child's heart, body, and mind. We're going to be taking a brain break here. Come on, let's dance. From the award-winning CD, You Can Dance, by The Learning Station. What is the human brain? The human brain is the center of the human nervous system and is a highly complex organ. It has the same general structure as the brains of other mammals, but it is amazingly over three times as large as the brain of a typical mammal with an equivalent body size. So that is why it's important to take brain breaks about every 30 minutes to refresh, recharge, regenerate, and release stress. Come on, let's dance. There's so many dances we can't count them all. Come on, let's dance. We'll make up our own and we'll have a ball.
Are there any questions? Oh, 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 oh! Can we do that again? That's a very good question. Of course we can. Just hit the replay button. All right, you guys did great. And I saw smiles on your faces. You were having fun. <laughs> Dancing is another great social outlet. Um, I know one family, they go, they take their daughter to some um, disco club. And it, it's up to a certain point on Friday nights. It's disco for kids. And then later it turns into dis to disco for adults. So they go and hang out. And that, that girl can't wait to go to disco for kids. And, uh, you know, dances at school. You know, there's all kinds of places you can take your kids dancing. A great social event. There's all kinds of places you can take your kids to socialize. And I saw our one student over there. He, he put down that tech device for a little bit, got up there and danced. So if you see your kids dancing in school, it's okay. They're taking a brain break. I did this with teachers the other day and had those teachers up dancing. So now put that in your lesson plan. When your principal comes by, get them in there too. Tell them you're taking a brain break. And woke everybody up too. Okay, so now we're going to get into scripting. Um, scripting, we've got some social skills cards. Now you guys have your social skills cards. I gave you the sets. If for some reason you didn't get a set because we ran out of the English version, I'll get your email address and I can send them to you, okay? Um, or if you come by the office, I can print you some more sets or something. But what we're going to do is we're going to have you, you get to come down again. Uh, we're going to have you get into groups of two or three. And I've got some packets of some laminated cards. And I'm going to give you in your groups a laminated card. And you're going to practice this social skill. And you're going to practice it and role play it in your group. And then I'm going to get some vol volunteers to model it. Now, I was going to have, do some video models and put you up here as video models, but we're not going to mess with the technology, as I said earlier. But we will ask for volunteers to model it, because that's another evidence-based practice, is modeling. So, let's have you come down and form, work together in groups. You know, some of you met some new friends just a little while ago. Why don't you get with some of those new friends and get in groups of two or three, and then I'm going to give you some cards. Okay, so come on down. Okay, I've got, I've got a group that's going to volunteer to model. Do I have someone else to model? One other volunteer to model? Another group to model? Okay, maybe someone else will be brave after... You guys are going to model, right? Yes. Okay, we've got some models here. And then, so if everyone else will go back to your seat so you can see them. And then if someone else is brave enough to come down and model after them. and So the script you're going to model? It's going to be about turning in an assignment. Okay. okay. Excuse me, teacher. Um, I need to turn in an assignment. How do I do that? The first thing you need to do is you get out of your chair and you walk to the teacher's desk. Would you like me to show you? Sure. Okay. Let's go walk. And then we look at this box and you find your name. So that's the second thing you need to do. So let's look for your name. And your name is? Consuelo. Consuelo. And what's your last name? Estrada. Estrada, so let's look for the E's. Oh, here we go. Let's open it up. Now, can you put your assignment in? Very good. Okay, now we close that up and let's walk back to your desk. All done. Good, good job. Thank you. You know what was so awesome? That wasn't on one of those scripting cards. So you, I bet that was something one of your children needs help with, correct? Am I right? So that's something you can help your child with, right? You guys are awesome. You, anyone else want to do that too? Help us? Oh, come on. That's all right. We'll move on. You change your mind. Okay, now this thing went back to sleep. That's all right. Because some, some people had some questions too, because I know you want to get to some questions, and so that led me to some um, things that I 
might be able to go, that, go to that aren't on the script. But there is a, a video that I want you guys to see because it's one that'll give you guys some hope too. While it's searching, someone had a question about bullying. And um, a lot of our kids have difficulty with sarcasm and teasing. And so sometimes they may take that as bullying, but also sometimes other kids may start teasing just as part of playing. And then because our kids don't understand it, that could lead to some bullying incidents because our kids can, can become targets. So you have to kind of um, have those conversations with them. And we, as I was discussing with the one group who had that question, another difficulty our kids have is um, with communication, right? If you sit down and you ask them a question and you ask them about those situations, they clam up because language and communication is a lot of times difficult for them. So a technique you can use is if they can write sentences at all, um, sit down and write the sentences with them or draw the scenarios out as you're talking with them. And that, that's sometimes a better technique. Even if they're very verbal, I will, as we're talking, I'll have a piece of paper and draw the situation out. And I've had kids take it from me and go, it wasn't like that at all. And they'll start drawing it out. And then I get a better picture of what really happened. And, um, and then you can also have written conversations with them as you're, you're talking the situation out. So as you're asking them questions, write the question out and see if they'll respond in writing. So those are two techniques you might use as you're trying to find out situations that happen. So you can find out if it's really a bullying situation or if it's just one of misunderstanding. And that way you can get to the heart of the matter. Okay, and then if they are having um, difficulty with bullying or misunderstandings on the playground or any, any situation, you can also build some teams of support where they know they've got key points of adults they can go to um, wherever they are and to go get help. And they should always seek help. Okay, this is where I was gonna insert those video models, but we didn't get there. Um, for peers, you wanna find peers, you know, everywhere you go um, for, Siblings are great peer support, and siblings are also going to be the first bullies. I'm from a family of six, and my siblings, even though we are great friends now, we get along great, we're all real close, um, but they will tell you I tortured them their whole life. And I said, we all turned out really good, so it couldn't have been that bad. Um, it, because I was the oldest, I had to keep them in line. But, you know, siblings know how to get under each other's skin and know how to um, really push the button to make each other scream. But they can also be the best peer coaches, too, and uh, great, great teachers. Um, church, clubs, interest groups, find out what your child's interest is and then and go from there. I mean, we've got some kids who love Legos and they go out and join Lego clubs. I've known some kids who like Pokemon and they'll, they'll, be, uh, they'll join Pokemon clubs. So there's lots of places you can go and join. Um, recreation centers are great places too. And we've got so many great parks and recreation centers in our city. So there's a lot of places that you can go and, and find um, different places. And friendship clubs. And I wish we had more time. I mean, I love to start friendship clubs with kids. And I've worked with teachers and parents in developing friendship clubs for kids. And you de develop a little network in their school using uh, a lunch bunch or recess time. Um, we've used other different times where we can pull kids together and develop a circle of friends. Um, through like a friendship club where we play games and teach them how to support each other and become a friend with a child who has a, a difference. And that can be a lot of fun and can help build some lifelong friendships. Um, and some resources are your teachers, your counselors, your church leaders, your club leaders. You know, getting into scouting can be a great op opportunity for some of our kids. Um, Another great way is involve your child in every part of your family life. 
Um, sometimes we baby our child who has a disability. Oh, but they have a disability. You know, they, they, poor child. I, they struggle so much with this disability. I can't make them do something else. You better, or they're gonna be sitting there home with you the rest of their life. Get them off their couch and put them to work doing some chores. Everyone else in your family does chores, right? You don't need to be picking up after them their whole life. You know, find some things that they can do to be a part of the family. They can pick up their room you know, break it into small steps. They can clear their things off the table. Maybe they can set part of the table for the family, but find things they can do to be a part of the family. They are part of your family. Take them to the grocery store with you. Again, six kids. Now picture, six kids. Now I'm gonna age myself here. If you couldn't tell already. Six kids in a Corvair with a mom, not a Corvette, a Corvair with the engine in the back and the trunk in the front, pulling into a parking lot for the grocery store every week. And one, as soon as we hit the parking lot, one would scream at the top of her lungs. We later found out, many years later, because this was before autism was identified, she had autism. She'd scream as soon as we hit the parking lot and all the way through the store. Usually, sometimes she'd stop when we got to the, the cereal aisle because back then they had books, those little golden books on the, the cereal aisle, right where the, your children could see them. And she knew which book she had and wh which book she didn't and which book she wanted that week. So she got reinforced. Sometimes that would calm her down, most of the time it did. Now at bedtime, same routine. She wouldn't go to sleep until we found the book she wanted to sleep with that night. Fortunately, there were five of us who could scatter around and find the book. So, you know, siblings can help a lot, we, but we took her shopping. We later, now we look back, and some of those events where we went to, it, we found out, we realized it was because sensory overload. You know, so we know a lot now. We would have done some things different. Like, we wouldn't have gone to Farrell's Ice Cream. That was way back where we lived on the, the West Coast, where when you have a birthday and they'd run out with all the sirens blaring, and she would end up in the parking lot with my dad because she be, would be screaming louder than the sirens blaring. So. Um, but we, we took her everywhere, and as children, we played with her, and she played with us as we played with all of our friends, and she rode bikes with us everywhere. So, you know, get your child involved with everything you do, and then talk to them and teach them in communication, what to say when, teach them social skills, teach them manners. It's the best thing you could do for your child. Because um, if you have a child who has manners, they're going to be received everywhere you go, everywhere they go. So now I'm going to show you a young man who has some great manners. Get the shower, do my morning routine, and go around 7 o'clock to come to work. I am so excited to go to work, so I do a dance off in the parking lot. It's a dance of magic. We serve breakfast, lunch, and hugs. The hugs are the best part. I am Tim Harris, and this is my place. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to my place. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Oh. Those are all the best part, buddy. I love you. Have you been here before? No, I've never been here before. Well, I'm Tim, I'm the owner. Tim's place is the special place to be at because it's run and operated by me. You guys are doing a great job back here. I love you guys. You guys are all the best cooks ever. Since I was a kid, I wanted to own a restaurant and I asked my dad to help me out. I'm very glad I did it. Thank you, Dad. I love you so much. I love you too, buddy. I'm very proud of you. 
When he was about 14 years old, he told us that someday he was going to own a restaurant. After we all uh, gulped and gasped, he began to take him seriously, and the result is history in the making. They support me so I can live up my dreams. I'm amazingly proud of my brother. Just what he's accomplished in his lifetime. I mean, people can only dream, you know? I know you all. As far as we know, we have not yet found another person with Down syndrome in this country that owns their own restaurant. We hope that other people will, though. My favorite part of all is the people coming through that front door. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Sometimes customers get sad. I give them a hug and they feel a lot better. Oh, thank you, Tim. The hugs are way more important than the food. The food is food, so. <laughs> How about a double hug? Yep, double hug. Love you guys. I am a mean, mean hugging machine. Oh yeah. So let me get this straight to you. Yeah. You're a restaurateur. Yes. And a special Olympic athlete. Special Olympic athlete. athlete. And you yes. won a gold medal. I won more medals than Michael Phelps. Good. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I did not let my disability cross the dreams. With people with disabilities, they can do anything they set their minds to. They're special. We are a gift to the world. Questions. Let's make it happen here in Big D. Let's make big things happen. Okay. If you've got any questions, that video kind of, kind of did it for you, huh? And if you guys come to any of my sessions, I'll have videos like that for you because I always find videos of families who are making it happen for their children. Because we've got a dream. We've, we've got a, Your kids have dreams, and we've got to be the, the movers and shakers for them and help them make their dreams come true. Because it can happen. We've got to be possibility um, people. Okay? Because we've got to turn disability into ability. I'm a firm believer in it. And we've all got to be that way. And we've all got to work together. You know, I'm Dallas ISD. I'm a Dallas person. Um, I've lived here most of my life. I live in this city. I work in this city. I work with your children. I work with you. We're here to make it happen, folks. We need to make our kids career and college ready, bring them back here to become business owners. We can make it happen. Let's make it happen. We all need to work together to make this happen. Okay? Let's do it. Thank you, guys.